By their nature, flying missile units have the potential to be exceptionally strong, and Dwarven Gyrocopters have been a staple of Dwarf play ever since the beginning of time, way back in the Stone Age of Warhammer 1. Uh, these days, they're superseded as flying missile units uh, in terms of kind of comparison <laughs> by Pterodon Riders. Pterodon Riders definitely very strong. They've got some other competition, like from Vampire Coast, obviously Wood Elves, but classic gyrocopter steam guns here. We've got to build Setzer versus Suarve. This is actually from one of the earlier rounds of the Warhammer World Championship, one game that I did not have a chance to get to. And Dwarfs vs. Skavens, always a tough time. Let's see what he's got. Quad Cannon for the Dawi, so just going all in, uh, you know, gambling on the Missile Play versus Skaven. They're already bunker-busting these Gisales here, which makes sense. Gisales are the most threatening to the cannons themselves. We've got Gromby leading the way. Double Master Engineer, very interesting. Actually, really like that. Warriors of Dragonfire pass in the back. Bunch of Miners and Dwarf Warriors protecting. Big old flank attack here from the Vanguard of Death Runners. Snitch, uh, an Assassin. We got some flares, we've got like yeah, the Gisales, bunch of chaff, so a lot of things that you would expect to see in this matchup. But here the dwarven gyrocopters are gonna play a very critical role in helping to protect against these uh nasty assassin rats. Vixter and Death Squad, ROR and Death Runners, all very, very strong, but they are light armor, relying mostly on their physical resistance. That means the explosive steam gun damage here, mostly non-armor piercing, will do quite a bit against them. You can see here, if I mouse over their missile damage, 37 explosive damage uh, with 12 base, 4 base armor piercing, and 8 explosive armor piercing. Uh, what it means is against light infantry, these guys do really nice burst damage. Of course, you saw the little bombing run there initially as well. But uh, Grombrindle gets mixed up with the Assassins. Grombrindle's magic damage means that if he can keep from getting completely sniped, there's all sorts of buffs and debuffs popping off right now, but uh, he can actually just wreck Deathmaster Snitch right now. He's managing to stay alive, but the Steam Gun's also going after after the Deathmaster himself. You can see he's in a similar situation, right? Zero armor from the Skaven Brew, but actually... <laughs> Just getting blasted by the steam guns there, so loss of leadership for the Skavens proving pretty critical. Obviously for their leadership, that's not great. The rest of the battlefield here, you can see the chaff kind of approaching on various fronts. The Gisales eventually do start countering the cannons, which is what they're here for. The flares are also in combat, but man, just blasting the kind of, uh, yeah, Death Runner and Assassin Trap. And Deathmaster Snitch actually shatters here. He's going to flee off the field. That'll put a big old dent in the balance of power against the Skaven because of the loss of leadership. They still got this Assassin to try and hold things together here. Caster as well, Plague of uh, uh, Plague Priest here. Lord of Plague, obviously. Gonna come forward and also get involved, but now Brombrindle can uh, solo these players here. Try and get them bogged down with the Smoke Bomb or whatever else. The Gyros also can just kind of Chewed in at these big old blobs of stuff. The wolf rats with poison, decently valuable target. Now they don't have any super valuable, excuse me, targets to shoot at, but a nice uh, cast of the fire ring of Thori too. I didn't really highlight that too much, but these master engineers here have got this item that it's not as good as Scabscraft, definitely just objectively worse than Scabscraft, but it's similar in terms of roll. Kind of a nice little directed wind ability. Does some okay magic damage against a target like Death Runners. Actually, it makes a lot of sense why you'd bring that. They're pretty solid, but a few rally Death Runners here are just going to get roasted from the sky, just straight up steamed like buns. Or, you know, vegetables or whatever you steam in your culture. If you steam things. Steamed beans? I don't know. Steamed hams? Definitely steamed hams. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Giselle's finally countering them, and in terms of this matchup, Rattling Guns are definitely the best counter for Gyrocopters, but uh, there weren't any Rattling Guns available to shoot, and I mean, the Giselle's are busy trying to whittle down the cannons because the Death Runner kind of flank attack did not you know, come through in terms of taking the cannons out, so Skaven just forced into a little bit of a rough situation here. It is going to end up being a little bit of a longer game just because the Skaven characters can stay alive here, the Gisales can keep shooting, and they do have quite a bit of ammunition left, so uh, one Gyro does get routed, although it's still got three models online here. Uh, Gyro's 105 speed does mean they can stay out in front of most units, but at the same time, they, uh, they don't have a whole lot of HP, magic resistance, as all dwarf units do. Uh, melee stats, uh, they have 30 attack, actually, and 66 weapon strength, which is something. Only six melee defense, but oh yes, 
this is what we want to see. Did you know, actually, I learned this from a Tariff meme, that uh, the flares were actually, you know, kind of invented based on the gyrocopter spinning blades. It's like, oh, we put the blade on the side and run it on the ground. Anyway, kind of silly bumper cars here. Skaven player are going to throw in the towel. Very well played to both Setzer and Suave. Setzer said this is actually, I think this is from round two or three. I don't remember exactly, but he said this is one of the only games he won in that round. And uh, considering it's Dwarfs versus Skaven, widely considered to be one of the most cursed matchups in the game from the Dwarfs side, I decided to cast it. And just beautiful gyro play as well. Very critical in helping defend the cannons against this uh, rush of light infantry here. These Death Runners still come in and, uh, well, one of them gets some value, but the other ones dealt with fairly well. I mean, Grombrindle, of course, magic damage in melee, survives the snipe attempt, but the Gyro's really putting in some clutch, timely support there in that specific engagement, then allowing the cannons to fire. I mean, the cannons end up not even really paying for themselves, but just pressuring enough Skaven to come forward. You know, the chaff kind of gets washed up on the line of staunch. Miners here, it's miners all actually trade fairly well in this situation. Longbeard's also Dwarf Warriors helping to defend the lines quite healthy at the end of the day, and I really like the double engineer pick too. Engineers I think are severely underrated in terms of Dwarf heroes, very very good at multiplayer given the right situation, and the Fire Ring of Thori, we didn't see the cast specifically, didn't highlight them, but that he did have some good casts there and definitely liked the, that option against Skaven. So very odd kind of left field build from Setzer, but that's what you got to do to try and get these matchups that are considered tilted, right? But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just quickly break down a few missile units, flying missile units, that is. So they they're come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, ranges, and missile types. So in terms of comparison to the gyro, uh, the, the steam gun gyrocopter, right? Because you have the anti-large kind of non-explosive brimstone gun, and then the, just the base version with the explosive steam gun, um... Uh, there, it's interesting because the explosive damage makes it different than a lot of other flying missile units, but you do have two others um, that also have explosive damage, right? You've got the deck dropper bombers that deal explosive damage, and then also you've got your fire leech bolas, neither of which are super common units. <laughs> um, so gyros out of these three would probably be the most commonly seen in terms of missile damage here. You can see that, uh, yeah, the missile strength on gyros is, let's have a look, explosive is 37 base explosive, whereas the fire leech bolas are 27 base explosive, which is interesting to me that the fire leech bolas have quite a bit more unit models, so in theory their missile damage should do a lot more, but it seems like in practice, I don't know, the explosion radius exactly is not shown here. I want to say that the explosion radius for the fire leech bolas is relatively small, um, they can also shoot 360 and have the drop rocks, which is comparable to the bombs. The bombs are actually probably slightly better. Um, it's hard to say. Again, the, the more unit models means there's pretty good burst from the dropping rocks. But, uh, yeah. They do also deal fire damage, whereas the base steam gun of the gyrocopter does not. The brimstone gun does, but again, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, the bombers here also deal fire damage, as do the fire leech bolas in terms of missile damage here. Yeah, 30 explosive missile damage, but basically no base missile damage, right? So it's all explosive, and uh, yeah, the gyrocopters here having that extra base missile damage overall just uh, higher damage as well, which does make sense, I mean, given that the deck droppers have a lot more unit models, 18 unit models in comparison to only 3 You'd expect some pretty good uh, difference in missile strength there, and then obviously there's a lot of other differences. Uh, Gyrocopter is actually less HP, but way more HP per model. They have 100 armor. They've got the magic resistance as well, drop rocks, but not undead. I mean, there's some some key differences there. The extra powder also means that the deck dropper bombers will do a little bit more damage in the air. But for me, kind of going into this comparison, it looks like on paper fire leech bullets compare very favorably to gyrocopters. I'll need to do some testing to see, like, with the explosion radius, exactly what the story is there. But certainly Gyro is a very strong option for Dawi, and especially given that for their faction. I mean, Lizardmen are a slowish faction, but they have actual cavalry, right? I mean, they have certainly more mobility than the dwarves, so it's not quite as critical to have at least something. But for dwarves, Gyros are literally your only unit that's faster than, like, 40-something, I think, right? Yeah, Slayers are 40 speed, so... 
they are your only mobility and uh that's as a result it's tough to keep them protected other than ground firing up into the air against something say like harpies but they will uh, be able to offer you something to chase routing units off the field um as we saw there with kind of chasing and sh and shattering snitch which was hard to say for some reason but uh, anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this one if you like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again we'll see you next time